Okay, so what we are going to do today is recreate the analysis presented in Gucciarati Chapter 5, uh, Econometrics by Example, where we're looking at testing for heteroscedasticity. We have the data downloaded from the Gucciarati's companion website, where we have the abortion rate in each United States state, and we have the series of independent variables he uses in the chapter. So we've religion, price, laws, funds, education, income, and whether something is picketed or not. In order to actually run our analysis, we're going to do a number of steps. The first step is we're going to run our model, we're then going to derive the residuals, and we're going to look at three ways of assessing whether heteroscedasticity is present. The first is a graph, the second is the Bruce pagan test, and the third is an abridged White's test. So let's begin our analysis by running our regression. So we simply select the data tab and data analysis. We then select regression and what we are going to select is our input y range, so our dependent variable, which is abortion, and we're going to select our independent variables as well. And this is essentially running equation 5.1 in chapter 5 of Gucciarati. What we want to make sure is that our residuals box is ticked. This ensures that Excel generates the residuals, which we're going to need in order to run our tests. So we select OK and we get our usual regression output. Now, as usual, there's a number of elements we would want to interpret. The first being the p-value for our f-test, the next being the r-squared, the p-value for each of our independent variables, and then the coefficients for the significant independent variables. So quickly, to summarize, the significance value for f is 2.85e to the minus 6. So we move the decimal places 6 places to the left, as signified by the e to the minus 6. So our p-value is less than 0 0.01, suggesting that our regression is significant at the 99% level. We have an r-squared of 0.57, indicating that 57% of the variation in y is explained by our x's. We have three significant coefficients. Um, this variable is significant at the 10% level. The p-value is 0 0.06, so it's not less than 0 0.05, so not significant at 95% level. And we have two other significant p-values. We would then interpret our coefficients of the significant variables. Now, what we're interested in doing is looking at whether we have heteroscedasticity present in our model. And we do that by looking at our residuals. So the starting point is we are going to analyze the residuals which are presented here. Now, all our tests essentially look at the square of the residuals. So what we're going to do is create this variable, residual squared or residual 2. To do so, we simply select the residual value, put it to the power of 2, and copy that formula down. So we now have our squared residuals. In order to begin our analysis, we're going to replicate figure 5.2, the squared residuals versus the fitted abortion rate. So we've the fitted or predicted y value, which is our fitted or predicted abortion rate, and we've the residual squared. So let's generate this graph by generating a scatter diagram and selecting our data. What we're going to do is select our x series of variables as being the predicted y values, or our fitted abortion rate, and we're going to select the y values as being the residual squared. Once we've highlighted these, we can select OK. And what we can see is we've replicated figure 5.2. Now, what we have is an increase in the values of the squared residuals as the fitted abortion rate gets larger, suggesting that we might have heteroscedasticity present in our model. Now, while the graph is indicative of whether it may be present or not, we want to provide a formal test for this. So we're going to apply the Bruce pagan test first of all. And we do so using equation 5.2 in the Gucciarati textbook. And this is essentially where we're going to regress the residual squared on all the independent variables we had in our original model. Now to do this, we're actually going to copy and paste our residuals and our predicted y from our regression output into our list of variables that we had from the start. Now, Let's run our analysis with the residual squares as the dependent and all our other variables then as our independent. So we highlight the residual squared as the dependent value. 
we highlight all our x variables that we had previously and we select OK. And note that we get new regression output and that this regression output matches table 5.3 in chapter 5 of Gucciarati. What we are interested in here is solely the p-value for f. What we can see is that this is significant. It is less than 0.1. This means that we can reject the null hypothesis of homoscedastistic error terms and we conclude that the alternative hypothesis holds and that is that the error terms are heteroscedastistic. This is negative and bad. It means that our error term is incorrectly specified. Now, what we will do is we're going to run the abridged whites test as well to confirm the presence of heteroscedasticity. And the abridged whites test is estimated using 5.3 in the Gucciarati textbook. And essentially, it is the squared residuals on the predicted y value and the predicted y value squared. So I'm just going to take my predicted y values and I'm going to create a new variable, predicted squared, which is simply the squared value of the predicted y's. So now that we have these predicted values and we have our residual squared, we can run our whites test. So we're going to apply our data analysis again in our regression. The input y values are the residual squared and the inputted x values are our predicted y and our predicted y squared. We select OK and what we have done here is recreate table 5.4. And again, what we are interested in is the sig value for f. The null hypothesis is homoscedastistic error terms. The alternative is that they are heteroscedastic. We can reject the null hypothesis and therefore conclude that we have heteroscedasticity in our model. Now, we need to correct for this potential heteroscedasticity and there are a number of mechanisms which can do this, such as White's heteroscedastic consistent standard errors. We could log our dependent variable and we could also perform weighted least squares.